Hi, I'm Iris Law and I'm here with Harper's Bazaar UK to show you guys what's inside my beauty bag. My personal beauty philosophy is to enjoy makeup and to use it to express yourself. Because I struggled with acne a lot growing up, I kind of got brought into the makeup world in a way of concealing and hiding my acne. And so now that my skin has cleared up, I just try and like really have fun with it and not to try and change your face or to make yourself look a certain way, but more as an accessory, something that complements the way you feel that day or what you're wearing or like something creative that you want to express. I think a lot of people look back on the makeup that they did and like cringe about it, but I kind of love the process that I went through. When I first started, the makeup that I would wear, I think it was really cute and I love doing these like dark eyes and messy hair, getting the coal eyeliner and like dragging it through the insides of my eyes, but I think that that was really fun and that like paved the way for other ideas and stuff like that. But maybe I would say, don't use products that are like clogging for your skin and stuff like that. Keeping your makeup kit really clean, like all your makeup brushes really clean and all your makeup new and fresh. This is my beauty bag. This is where I keep my makeup brushes. So this is going back to keeping your makeup brushes clean, um, especially if you're prone to breakouts. So I just always wrap my brushes in like a little scarf. This is like a, what's it called? Like a beauty blender. Um, sponge. I use my hands a lot when I do my makeup, but I do carry around brushes, like obviously for powder. And yeah, I'm obsessed with Miffy. There's a lot of Miffy things in there. These are all my things that I use for my acne. Nighttime, morning, and then I take one of these a day. And it's just to help settle my skin. I had acne from like quite a young age. I think I, it started when I was 12. So then I made the decision to go on Roaccutane. It eventually somewhat cleared my skin, but that only lasted for a year. Since then, I've never really like gone on medication for it. I just allowed my skin to be like a little bit acne prone and just stayed on top of everything, kept super clean, had a really simplified skincare routine and all of that. And then this year, my acne came back full force, no idea why. And so then we were deciding whether to do another round of Roaccutane and I decided against it. So I'm on spironolactone, which is like a hormonal medication. It's not a cure, it's like a, you take it every day and while you're on it, it suppresses the hormones that cause the acne. But um, right now I'm in like a good place with it. Plasters, I make ceramics and the clay that I use has got like sand in it. So I get cuts on my hands and then I use these Minnie Mouse and Mickey Mouse on the plasters. I love my hair so much now. I feel like my hair is a better representation of how I want to express myself. I sometimes like look at clothes that I've owned throughout my hair journey and like the way that I want to wear them, I get it across better with my hair now or when I had my shaved head. So I feel more comfortable in myself and I feel more like I'm expressing what I want to express, basically. But I didn't think that I was ever gonna grow into a pixie. I thought I was gonna stay shaved for a really long time. And then it naturally started growing, and now I love it, and I love that I can play around with it and like scrunch it and have it in front of my face. Olaplex oil for my hair. I'd never bleached my hair before, and it's very stressful, and it breaks, even though my hair is short. So this is Olaplex bonding oil, and then I've got like other products at home, which is more bigger packaging and stuff. So this is just good to like bring with me. And now makeup. So then the first thing I do is concealer. This is the um, Dior Skin Forever Concealer. I don't really use much foundation. I kind of only use the concealer, and I use quite light concealer for my skin tone because I'm using it in such specific places and those are the places that you kind of want to lift. That's how I start my makeup. Another thing that I noticed this year was how much more confidence I have in myself and how much less I care about how I look and my acne because my acne came back and it really, it was hard. You know, before I used to cancel my plans because of my skin, whereas now I was going out like full 
acne out, just like didn't care. I would go and meet my friends. I would go to like concerts and just not wear makeup and give my skin a rest. And I mean, obviously it's always gonna like make you feel a certain way, but it wasn't too bad on my self-esteem. It felt good that I like have self-confidence. I don't do this every day, but this is like just to re like neaten up my eyebrows. I can't do this as well as a hairdresser would do it. So I just do this for when I'm like in my own time and just want to neaten it up. This is um, Refi. I had never heard of this brand. My friend told me about this and I never used to do anything to my eyebrows, but this is so good and it sticks your eyebrows down and it just feels like you've like lifted your whole face. She actually went and bought me this because she had kept telling me about it, so thank you. Blush. Sometimes I use lipstick for blush because then I have quite a lot of different shades of lipstick while I travel and so then I have different options. But for my powder blush, this one's my favorite because it's got a tiny bit of orangey tones. This is the Coral Dior Backstage Rosy Glow. I love that one. I also have this blush, which I bought from Bully in Paris, which is a really beautiful store. And it's a natural clay and you wet it and you use it on your lips and your cheeks, but it goes very red. And yeah, and it's natural and it stays for a really long time. It's like a stain. This makes me feel like I'm in like an ancient world. I feel like my makeup has changed and gone through different phases over the years. So I've had phases where I'm more focused on eyeshadow and more excited by that. And then I had a phase where I was like super obsessed with blush, which I still wear blush every time I do my makeup, but I really like doing these bright red cheeks and like bright red nose. That was when I was like 18, I think. And making it really obvious that there's blush there, kind of inspired by like Shelley Duvall kind of vibes. And then eyeshadow. What I love about this and all of the Dior eyeshadow palettes is they always have some colors that you could use to be in like a really creative look and then some colors that you could use to, you know, like go to somewhere where you need to look smart. This silver one is when I've got um, the Vivian Westwood headscarf on and I put the silver on and then I put red under my eyes. And then this one, I like layered this on until it was like super white and then I put glitter on top. Um, but I love that I can then also just like go to a meeting or whatever with the um, lighter colors. And this one is part of the Christmas collection. So that makes sense. There's like little glittery, some red, Christmassy. Working with makeup artists from a young age gave me access to a wide range of products and seeing how professionals use them made me be able to understand how I wanted to take on that knowledge and implement it into, you know, buying some of those products myself and finding what works for me and works for my skin and things that excited me. I'm in a very big glitter phase right now. So the one that I use almost every single day is this one. It is so glittery, like it comes out and it's like shining. Even if I'm just going to my pottery studio and I've got my literal pajamas on, I just put this under my eyes and it just puts me in a good mood, especially in winter. Also from Japan, from Don Quixote, it's like, it doesn't actually come out as green as that. So it's just like green undertone pearly. So I put the Dior white and then I put this over the top or I'll put like, a darker eyeshadow and then use this in the corner. And then I found this on TikTok and it's like pearly, reflective, metallic um, mascara. And this was also from Japan. And I had to do research about where this was stocked and then I went and found it. But yeah, it, it makes your eyelashes look like they're made of silver. It's really hard for me to pinpoint what inspires me. I think it's more just like an energy of what's around me in that moment. So obviously I've mentioned a lot of Japanese products. Just spent time in Japan. Right now I'm on like a specific glitter kick. You don't see glittery products in like the UK, whereas like in the equivalent of just like easy access makeup, there's so much color and glitter. But I'm definitely inspired by old runway shows, current runway shows, hair, makeup friends, movies, 
fan out of stuff. My mum always wore red lipstick. That was my first insight into makeup. Red lipstick, very simple. She keeps it simple. She does her makeup fast, which I love. And I'm the same. I do my makeup in five minutes every time. It's all about just like doing it for fun. And then most used and most biggest obsession is the lip glow oil. This was like my first product from Dior that I just fell completely obsessed with. They're so pigmented, so you don't need to wear lipstick underneath. And it's so juicy and oily and I'm just obsessed with it. And like, it has this big um, fuzzy like applicator. <laughs> I love it so much. And then I have my straw. I have like a bunch of these at home. And surprisingly, none of these have ever broken. They're glass. Um, but they're so cute and if I'm like in the makeup chair and I have a straw and I don't have to waste no plastic straws and this one's just really cute and I like just having things that make me like in a good mood and the, everything in this bag puts me in a good mood including this especially if you're working like long hours or you're traveling or you miss home these just make me happy and I use these at home as well when I'm traveling I like to have everything that I need to feel calm. But this is from this place called Tea Bucks and it's a really amazing um, tea shop in Japan. They've made these blends that work really well for different occasions. So this one says to drink it while you're listening to music. Here's the chamomile one. And it says that this is for, it's chamomile roasted tea for while you're reading a book, which I love. And then another thing for stress, that CBD. But this one tastes like orange blossom and I always bake with orange blossom. So it's like, it feels like I'm eating cookies when I have this, so it encourages me to take my CBD. Incense, this is my favorite incense and it's rope incense, rose flavored. And I love rose flavored anything. If I see a rose candle, I'm like, oh. This has been part of my routine for, since I, was like 17. They basically are eye masks, but they heat up and they smell like lavender and they like steam your eyes and they're just amazing and they're so good for if I'm trying to fall asleep on a plane. I just love these so much. Honestly, I do usually feel most beautiful without makeup on. Like sometimes at the end of a shoot, when I wipe it off, I'm like, oh, that's me again. Because it just feels more like comfortable in myself, but I also feel most beautiful when I'm using my makeup to express myself and I feel like cool or I feel like I'm being fun or like playful. I think that's what I focus on and then, then I feel beautiful because I feel like I'm fulfilling something creative. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed hearing what's in my beauty bag.